Hello. So, I am planning on redoing this video at some point with a bit more of an official one. I don't really have a good controller to play with, so I'm actually just going to be commentating over the current world record from January 22nd, uh, 2019. It's over two years old. But this is going to be like a sort of guide slash tutorial for what uh, any percent early repto is. Now note that this route is outdated. The route that you're going to be seeing is outdated. Um, not massively outdated in terms of what it does. It's actually quite safe, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it does have stuff that I do need to comment on and explain. But without further ado, let's get straight into the run. So we'll be starting off basically as uh, every speedrun that doesn't just skip to the end does, which is to grab the bubble breath rune. In this in this run you will be handing it in immediately, as you do also in 100%, before turning around to do Hunter's Jumping Tutorial. The movement for this section is quite simple to get down, uh, you just hand in the rune, go do Hunter, and carry on from there. A few things to note before the run. You would like to you would want to be turning off the hints in the options. Turn off hints in options. And also if you're on if you're on a PAL GameCube, uh turn off voices. Because for some reason the dialogue actually takes a while to load. And uh with voices on compared to voices off. That is about all that you need to do for pre-run setup. Just is uh, this is just to decrease the amount of delay that there will be. Now, something that that just did, which was kind of risky, is you can skip sparse dialogue for those, but it's not a terrible idea to just take it. And as you are seeing here, this is the best route for doing the scarecrows. For an early rip though, especially since it grabs tunes, uh, which is the loose dragonfly right at the start of the home world, uh, whilst doing this. And that's what a lot of these sort of challenges are going to be like. They're just going to be trying to grab as much as possible whilst getting the objective. So once that's done, you're going to then head into Dragonfly Dojo. And you should aim for having oh, about 100 gems. Anywhere from 100 to 104 is decent. And you can see my PB gets 102. Dragonfly Dojo is one of the simpler levels in the run. A lot of the... Well, I said it's one of the simpler levels. There's a lot of simple levels within this run. Like, any percent in the early rip, though, as a whole, isn't a very difficult run to sort of uh, learn and get used to. And that Zoe there is one of the few examples of where dialogue would actually screw over a PAL player, because if you did have voices on, a PAL player would have to wait for about 5 or 6 seconds before Zoe actually talked. So we pick up uh, the, the first dragon in ice. <coughs> Just rush straight to him. There's then a few five gem baskets around this pagoda that you can pick up. Uh, my PB definitely grabs the safe amount. If you go out into the water, there's a ten gem basket and a loose five to grab. And when you're running along main paths, I'm going to be mostly picking up the two gem, uh, any two gems which are in the way, one gems which are very in the way, but. Generally avoiding a lot of the lower ranked gems. So I'm going to pause it here to explain what I just did. Um, if we look at this a little bit better. So before this I'm actually doing a jump. I'm going to be doing just a regular new, uh, normal jump. 
not a charge jump this is just a jump then for a very short amount of time there's actually a hover here and as soon as that hover begins i am then also intercepting that with the hover so it's a jump into a glide and as soon as the glide starts to go off you hover and you skip up to the kites, which otherwise would require the ice breath. You can see not really anything miraculous for gem routing. We just picked up the kite and we now head straight over to the electric breath room. Of this dragon and then from this dragon we're going to be actually uh, doing one of the more difficult catches if you well if you saw like old age 100% runs people hated shellac in the early rip though shellac is actually pretty fine um, it's not a difficult catch to get down uh, the new 100% route also has a pretty decent setup for that catch but you can see it's generally just a lot of tight movement. I'm just going around each area, grabbing up what's necessary. A couple of five gem baskets here. Uh, maybe you don't need the second one. Like, if you want gems to cut out, there's gems on the water in the first area. And then maybe that second five gem basket can be added. We pay money bags here. The only... Uh, currents of money bags requires 200 gems which isn't really a problem it's quite easy to get 100 gems by this point right yeah we were we were over by almost 40 in this run like there's not really much chance of you not being able to pay money bags <coughs> especially if you take out some of the gems which i've already said can be optional couple of five gem baskets in that pagoda before doing the catch on dawn if you want to make that glide easier so there was a glide there across that gap i did that with a charge jump you can just neutral jump that one uh, or just do a normal jump and glide and then for this catch you actually just want to be bubbling as soon as you hit the floor and you should catch dawn uh, a note for any loose dragonflies, if you don't actually get the fast catch, then the best way to catch them is by gliding. The bubble breath is a lot more consistent whilst gliding. And as you can see there, same technique as with the first flag, uh, not flag, kite. Pick up that second, to get that second kite. My PB picks up a few extra gems here. Uh, oh, actually, no. Sorry. Direction. I've actually, well, that actually just reminded me of something. So, for some reason, I went back to doing the whirlwind, when really, that jump that I just did in this run is better. So, yeah. If you can learn that jump, learn it. You can take the whirlwind if you want, it's not that much slower. If you are at the top of the whirlwind, uh, do the slight backpedal movement and then land on the platform with the third dragon. Okay, that would be the best way to go about getting the whirlwind. Otherwise, just do the jump that I did there, which surprised me. <laughs> We just continue through the level like normal, couple of loose dragonflies, uh, one in the hallway, Cinder I believe it was, like that one can be quite awkward but just use the glide, and then for Cloudy you just do what you did with Dawn, as soon as you land on the platform just bubble breath and you should catch him. A little bit of 
uh, funky movement there. I actually jumped, I actually landed on the lower bit instead of where the kite was. By triggering the NPC's sort of welcome dialogue, or greeting, di uh, greeting animation, that uh, kite cutscene will actually play. So then you bring the kite down, talk to the dragon, uh, get the dragonfly, and that is Dragonfly Dojo. <coughs> Next up is the movement to Crop Circle Country. There's not really a lot to say. All that I can really say is there will be one tiny little thing which is just triggering the sparks dialogue for the electric challenge a bit early. I do apologize for the lack of game audio or video audio. Uh, I uh, when when like I said, if I when I do this over, like when I do it again, I am gonna do a run through whilst doing it with a little bit more in depth uh, wording and also with the new route and also you get game audio. This is just sort of a quick guide, I guess, where I explain what's going on in the run, really. Crop Circle Country is a little bit uh, a little bit longer than Dragonfly Dojo. We're going to be starting off by doing a lag clip. Now, uh, the way that lag clips work is by using the flame breath, you're actually lagging the game using the flame particle hitting the door. The thing with gates in this game is that they won't bonk you. You can charge into them, but they will not give you a bonk. So, you can sort of use that to your advantage. Because whilst the game is lagging, it doesn't accurately track your position. So, if the game recalculates and it sees that Spyro is actually on the other side, it will actually put Spyro through to the other side. If it doesn't recalculate you to be on the other side, then you'll be stuck outside and you just have to keep trying it. But that clip through the gate will get you to the end of the level Dragonfly. You talk to that farmer twice to get a dragonfly and also unlock the ray gun minigame or well, not minigame but dragonfly as well as the cows coming up the um, catch on Akira by the way make sure you do it like I did there like that is the best way to catch Akira Akira can be very awkward especially since that area lags a lot Skipping quite a lot here, we just go straight into the cows. You have to uh, use flame or electricity or charge the cows twice in order to get them to move. So doing it like this is generally a good idea. These gems here can be seen as backup gems, but they're also sort of on the way to Mitnick. Which actually uses this version's uh, sort of, of breath charging, where if you try to like flame charge or electric charge or bubble, whatever you do, whenever you charge, your breath will go straight into the floor. So from those three gems on that last hay bale, you want to sort of do that movement or that tech to really sort of to aim your breath downwards. 
I wouldn't recommend grabbing as many of the loose gems as I did there. Uh, I only really did that because the cows were very awkward. The cows are seemingly random with how far they'll go. And then you talk to that farmer twice to get the dragonfly. Now, this jump here, quite a tricky jump. It's a momentum conservation jump. You have to time the hover pretty decently. You have to time everything about that quite um, uh, quite closely. But first up, my favourite bit, head bash clipping. If a rooftop or a surface above you is thin enough and you head bash below it, you will clip through it. So we used two uh, head bash clips there, one to get onto the bridge from beneath it. Beneath the bridge is 14 quite decent gems. Uh, we get onto the bridge which has another five and then the rooftop on the bridge which has the dragonfly. As I was quickly gonna say, uh, if you fail the jump, you can always just go to a normal way to the five and 10, uh, to those fives and tens. This challenge just sort of gets broken in so many ways. Um, one thing I will say, it doesn't act that way on PS2. The head bash clipping and all of that, the cycles are completely can, uh, the same. For PS2, you want to head bash clip up to the final layer of diodes and electrocute all of those just to be safe. You can do a fast strat on PS2, but I've found it to be ridiculously random and happens to have odds that aren't in your favor. <clears throat> but for GameCube, just do it as I did there. It works and it's done. Loading issues, don't worry about these, these won't crash your game, well, they won't crash your game if you don't leave the level. Like, this happens quite a lot, I decided to be a bit fancy with it, you can have your breath sort of expand into infin infinity. Why did, why did I electrocute that? So... Sparks can pick these gems up. For the first 25 through the floor, you jump after the first vase. And then for the second one, you jump before the second vase. And then that was actually a momentum conservation, uh, what I'm going to call a double jump. So I took a bit of momentum into the jump to get me a little bit more vertical. Uh, height uh, to get me a little bit more height off of the neutral jump and then I just did the glide and hover like I did beforehand finish up the ray guns here there's a few decent gems to pick up here in these vases and then loose on this island before picking up fluffy is it oh flavi not fluffy fluffy is very much later in the game and then finishing it up with the super flame or fireball challenge. A bad route that this uses. I do get quite close. The uh, actual e uh, effective range of these fireballs is pitiful for the amount of effects they seem to unleash upon the game's graphics. But with that done, you can pick up that extra five if you so wish. Just leave the level. So next up is one of the longer splits. First up with the electric challenge in the home world. So you want to be doing this one quite quickly 
there is a dragonfly involved in this one. For these two on the hay bales, you want to start the electric uh, the breath before you're touching the hay bale. That will actually force the hit, uh, electric breath into the hay bale. And a general rule of thumb in this game is that if a hitbox exists, it will extend downwards. So doing this quickly, you then pick up Amy on the beach before the last two. And you pick up Alex. And it's not a very difficult one, that one's sort of very lenient with how much time you get. It's a lot more difficult in 100%. So we unlock Clue out, and that trick is about as simple as it looks. Um, you just full jump into the pier, into that little pier strut, and it will put you underwater. You want to be under wa uh, walking underwater because swimming in this game is actually quite painful, unless you sort of know how to control it efficiently. Um, you can use the sort of lip of the island to be able to do the double jump to get on top of the water. If you miss it, just head bash. Just head bash after the hover and get swim and then go to the surface. There's no point trying to get it again or trying to do it again. But now we're in Luau. <clears throat> so regular progression carries on. Now note that this doesn't cover the PS2 route, by the way. The PS2 route is different. But the first thing you'll notice, we aren't picking up the wing shield. There is zero point for that. That used to be in the PS2 route, but the p with the new PS2 route, which I will link probably in the description. Like I'll link the PS2 run that I have that I have up recently. I'll probably put that in the description of this one. Like you can see that route for yourself. But this is how bad the swimming is. There are a couple of 25s and 5s that you can pick up under the water in that last section. Which... Uh, I do in some of my newer runs in exchange for some of the ones that I've grabbed thus far but if you're like really high on gems you don't need to worry about them not really much to get around these pigs you can skip the first one by getting to him before his dialogue actually loads what on me you can avoid that by jumping oh right this has dino clip so if you get pushed by an entity into a gate you can also get pushed through the gate like that so I actually just used the dino's attack to put me through the gate get Socrates a little bit earlier. Okay, so I'm going to say this now. And I'm going to pause the video. I do not expect you to do this jump. I expect you to, well, to start off with, you should always do the targets. Do the targets, no matter what, and grab the stuff on those little ledges. It's so much safer, and you're going to lose a lot less time than failing this. Okay. 
if you want to do that, it is just a charge jump. And you want to be basically timing your bubble so that Homer is above you. If Homer is above you, then you will catch him. If he's not, you may catch him about 10% of the time. Like that that time there in in this run was lucky. So we're coming through to the third area now. The arches grant ten gems, so you should you should always make it a goal to do them. They're there, they don't really take much time and They're generally decently rewarding. This island here I just sort of full clear. Because why not? It It's a small island there's, and you're generally going to f pick up everything accidentally. That's not the movement you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just charge jump and glide straight over to the mantas. If you're on PS2, you do not do this minigame. This minigame is not for you. But if you're on GameCube, uh, there's not really much to explain. Uh, just follow this route. This route has 11 ma uh, baby mantas. I did do a little bit of pre-movement. I find out that I found out the hard way that that's actually just a bad idea. But <coughs> Follow this route, it has 11 baby mantas on the way, or not 11, 12 baby mantas. You need 11, so you can skip one whilst the net is recharging and be fine. But otherwise this just gives you 11 easy manta rays and Hunter doesn't stand a chance. If you are doing a PS2, that challenge is actually replaced by uh, one of the slide dragonflies. And then the other slide dragonfly in Monkey Monastery is done to replace the feeds, then feeds. But it also somehow... I'm still not entirely sure how the uh, whole route actually works. In, on PS2 but it works out quite nicely so I've already gone through two of the arches we just go through the last two. Oh wow okay my PB doesn't actually end up getting the 10 gem for some reason I didn't actually think I went through all the arches but you just do that get the arch reward and head on through to the final area. A little bit of terrible movement by my world record. Don't worry about that. That is to be expected. Again, not really grabbing too many out of the way gems. Like going for the fives. Don't know what I was doing here. Like going at going for these fives. Hit the final button to get the end of level dragonfly. If you were playing 100%, this would be something that you uh, you would do later. Since you would have to go this way anyway. We grab scuttlebutt just like that. You want to have flame breath equipped instead of electric. Doesn't. I kept switching between them for some reason. But generally, you want to be using electric breath for every day means. I guess when it comes to this game, the the electric breath is a lot more consistent, has a lot more of a spread, and deals a lot more damage than the flame breath does but if 
for certain things like that cannon, you have to use the flame breath. After the well, after you're done with the well, warp to Dragon Realms instead of uh, exiting level normally. Because you want to get back to this at main section. <coughs> As you want to go to Cloud 9. So Cloud 9 is the start of, oh well, is one of the two instances of something that has very much changed a lot of the NER route. And that was the, uh, and that was the Dragonfly Doop, which you will see near the end of this level. When this were, uh, run was done, that was actually a complete accident. And you'll be able to see it in Monkey Monastery when I do one of the slide dragonflies and not both of them. We start off by grabbing the ice breath and then heading over to this thing over here, this ray gun. Because these ray guns are very useful. They grant us two dragonflies for the price of one. Granted, if you get that, that's if you get dragonfly dupe. I'm going to say this here and probably also put it down in the description. If you fail the dragonfly dupe here, you want to make up your dragonflies by doing. Monkey Monastery Slide 1 and 2, and then taking out Thieves Den Platforming. If you miss this Dragonfly Dupe, uh, if you get this one and then miss the Dragonfly Dupe in Honey Marsh, then it's a little bit more destructive. Uh, you will have to bother going and doing either the Honey Marsh Slide Or you do the Waste of Speedway time attack. Meanwhile, it's just been movement from here on out. A head bash clip onto the Rainbow Road. Not really anything to explain in any depth. We don't need the Thief in this level because we don't actually need the Wand. It's the one thing that I haven't been able to root out of 100% is the Wand. At some point I will like to. Uh, this is about as good as the gem root gets in this circle. I wouldn't really say you need to backtrack for anything. Another head bash clip onto the rainbow road for this dragonfly here. That dragonfly can be really awkward but just make sure you do not fall down if you need to chase him. Like, try and grab him where he stands initially, but just try not to fall if you need to chase. Apologies about me yawning. I should have done this hours and hours ago, but I didn't bother. So I'm doing this a little bit late. Another ray gun here. Just act in accordance to that cycle. Um, you can play that safe or you can play it not safe. You may find it a little bit awkward getting off. Just make sure you do a full jump. I wouldn't cut. I wouldn't cut jumps that close. By the way, <laughs> ETD physics are a marvel in video game physics. So generally you want to be safe with jumps. I do play it very recklessly. Okay, uh, 
something for Ice Boy. If you bubble above him uh, straight away, then he'll get caught. Just bubble above him as you're entering the room. This staircase here, we're just grabbing up these fives and twos. Not really much excuse to not do that. Spartus is very reactive in this game, so don't be afraid to rely on him to pick up certain gems. This dragonfly here that you get from the lightning clouds is kind of a weird one. So. Oh. So, by quick skipping text, you can glitch his text out and you can escape where you're standing for the dragonfly. And that is actually something that I should explain now before it's too late. So, what I'm doing when it comes to skipping text is I'm actually mashing A and Y. Or X and triangle. That makes text skipping a lot quicker. And in certain circumstances it will actually cause text to not even load. And immediately skip. Or. It will cause certain dialogues to glitch out. If dialogues glitch out. Then. Generally there is a chance that you could. Potentially dragonfly dupe if that NPC has one, but I've only managed to make it happen with two that do get glitched out because of that. Another example of an NPC that can get glitched out by it is Moneybags himself. <laughs> um, so you could often quit skip Moneybags and not even pay him, and nothing would happen. You would have to just keep talking to him. But it's also going to be very useful when it comes to the dragonfly dupes. I'm not sure why I was... Oh, I went out of my way for that too because I still had the fireball. Uh, you cannot use any of the breaths when you have fireball, so don't pick up the fireball power up twice because it's a hindrance. So for certain NPCs, I am also hitting them sometimes before their um, sort of welcome animation is going to play. This skips the animation and sort of just lets them be able to talk. And this is the NPC that you want to be performing your first uh, Dragonfly dupe on. So as soon, so when you see this text box here. As soon as you skip this, you want to be doing the same technique for quick skipping, which is by using X and triangle or A and Y. Because what that will result in is this. You will escape the dragonflies, uh, or you will escape the dragonfly, and when it comes to this NPC, when you talk to him again, his dialogue will replay. And after this is skipped, you will then pick up a dragonfly that is nameless but still counts. And remember for that NPC that there is only one piece of dialogue. There is only one piece of dialogue before the dragonfly. So, once that dialogue's happened, you need to escape the dragonfly's area. Okay, you just need to get out of the spot where you would be uh, receiving the dragonfly normally. But after that, just go for the hallway, come into this room get goose then go outside onto this balcony and get Margaret and leave
don't do what my PB does there. What you want to do is you actually just want to turn right and come up into this path. Okay, this path leads up and up to the ice gate. We don't actually have ice breath, so we have to lag clip our way through. Sometimes you don't actually have to lag clip. You can just go straight through that little bit in the uh, gate there. But that gets us into this area. We want to be taking this higher road. And focus more on these two gems. I these paths only have ones and twos on them. So you really want to be making sure you pick up these twos. Like Sparks is very, very good. So like you can sort of run past a whole bunch of gems and he'll pick them all up. Uh for these NPCs you want to be hitting them before their welcome dialogue. But after talking to the NPC, unlocking Monkey Monastery. That 25 and the dragonfly and enter. Enter what is at this point the uh, longest level. Well, well, in this run, it's the longest level. I think. I think now Luau has the longer split, maybe. I don't know, it's close. I don't actually remember fully. A little correction here. Uh you wanna pick up this drag uh pick up this dragonfly immediately. There's a dragonfly in this area, you wanna pick him up immediately. Get that dragonfly, then deal with the mammoths. This dragonfly is kind of awkward. Uh that's, that's why I say to grab it immediately, because its initial position is the easiest place to get it from. And you don't actually have to worry about the mammoths. Because most of the time the dragonfly will go out onto the ice. Mammoths are annoying enemies. They are immune to electricity. So you have to make sure that you're hitting them with flame. So another lag clip through another gate immediately with a dragonfly behind it. Quite an easy dragonfly to uh, catch, doesn't move that fast. And this is the biggest, so, this is the biggest change from new routes to old routes. Firstly, PS2 wouldn't Actually, uh, well, no, PS2 would still be here. PS2 would be following the normal route up until about halfway through, where then it starts to go backwards through the level. Again, I'll put the PS2 run down in the description. And you would only do this minigame on GameCube if you failed Cloud9 Dragonfly Dupe. What you're watching is basically not actually in the route and unless you just want it for a backup or you just want two extra dragonflies for whatever reason i have thought about putting it back into the route but i haven't actually done much more than that Purely because, well, it's really boring. Uh, purely because I just haven't been playing the game. But I have ordered new controllers, so I will probably be putting some time back into this game. Uh, I still want to put time into Spiral 1 though, so don't expect it that frequently. And I do want to get back into FF13 stuff again. If you have to do the slide, just follow this route. This route is the simplest one. You can go down the right fork. It's a little bit more riskier, but it does save two seconds. Oh, well, I think it saves like a second. If you do it both times, then it saves two seconds. But if you do it the second challenge, your time will actually be quite limited. 
like going the path I did there is like so free because that gives you like 20 seconds of time which is like more than enough You want to really be pretty, you want to mash Y or triangle because that will teleport you straight over to the NPC just to get your dragonfly. So my PB only gets one of these, obviously because it dupes a dragonfly in cloud 9. But it doesn't actually dupe a dragonfly in honey marsh. But if you're going to do the first dragonfly you might as well do the second. <clears throat> so getting back on track come up here for shadow you want to actually uh, uh, so change here you want to electrocute the baskets through shadow before bubbling shadow shadow is one of those dragonflies which requires two bubbles because the first one actually like, activates shadow fun fact about these birds you can kill them with breath so if you're lucky and you're on a cycle, then hey, you can kill one of them with the breath and the other one with the cannon. You can kill all three of the birds with the cannon. I don't actually bother with that. You can take some pot shots for the third one, for the third bird. So this whirlwind, you want to immediately dive out of it for this for, uh, yeti <clears throat> but as you go up it again um, you want to immediately backpedal or sort of reduce your movement because whirlwinds in this game set you out at set mo uh, movement speeds and this one sets you out at a really slow speed so we've got this cannon up here Destroy the ice wall that's guarding that yeti and the last bird to get our dragonfly. I could imagine that I am going crazy right now in this run because I'm like, what, two and a half minutes ahead? this point well not even two and a half like over two minutes ahead <laughs> but we follow that path uh glide around the ice wall to get the key and then we go into this mini game And if you're on PS2, this would be your second to last mini game area. Or hell, even if you're on GameCube, this is your second to last mini game area. <coughs> I've changed up my route for this so many times. I don't think this is a good route, though. I would not approve of this route. Uh, look at the route in the 100% record, I think, would be a little bit better. Or the one in the PS2 run. Like, that's definitely not a great factory's route. It's a very fast minigame, but that was not a great route.
second Yeti rescued. No, third, sorry. Third Yeti rescued, two more to go. Which quickly becomes one more to go. On PS2 there is a different way of getting up to this Yeti, which makes Backwards Monkey Monastery work. Like, you can do it on GameCube, it's just not worth it. Because PS2 version actually aims to end on the slide minigame. Because then it can warp out of it instead of having to go through another loading screen. First usage of a key. One of three. The only key that's not used is Jurassic Jungles. Definitely not how you should be doing gem routing. Like, and I would save talking to Bartholomew for uh, later on. For quite a few of the smaller things, look at the PS2 run. Um, the PS2 run has a little bit of better movement. And generally decent execution of, uh, or better execution of areas. Map this entire spire to the cannon. There's only one thing you need to shoot with the cannon, and the cannon is already pretty much looking at it. So you just get onto the cannon, you shoot it, you get off, and then you go straight for the last yeti. If you're in the right spot, you can actually get that tech spot to load up quicker and skip it whilst you're on your way down. It's like tiny time saves. So this is a, so up and coming is a dragonfly and ice. This one's not as bad as foamy. Like you can generally get him quite easily. My PB actually misses him. If you miss him, just try and get into a position where you can see him, and then you gotta make your movements based on where the dragonfly might go. So we then drop back down to Bartholomew. You have to talk to him twice overall in order for him to give you the thing. You cannot quit skip his text or else it will not actually play. And as much as I have tried to dupe his dragonfly, he has been very reluctant to do so. But that ends Monkey Monastery, which is the longest level in the run. A little bit of confusion on that part. Um, you can hand in the ice rune now, or you can hand it on the way to Fee's Den. If you hand it in now, then you on GameCube you could theoretically warp back to Monkey Monastery <laughs> if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm not sure what use it would really be. There's no real way of doing a two visit monkey monastery. The dragonfly route wouldn't amend it. I guess you skip out a whole bunch of uh, movement. But actually, it doesn't even matter because you get the cutscene after this. So, like, it, it's actually better to hand it in later. Honey Marsh is the shortest level of the run. We go from the longest level into the shortest level. This level is very just condensed. Like this is probably one of the better designed levels. 
that this game has purely just in its pacing this level just has a lot better pacing than a lot of the other ones do lots of very convenient five gems and just very useful gems along the way like even though we're not really detouring for gems that much we're still picking up a lot of gems so I'm going to do if uh, Spirit says grabbing fodder after you defeat that thief who has a, a dragonfly. You should always just stand still. If you try to move around, Sparks can sometimes forget that he's got a dragonfly to give you, and you will be soft locked until you re enter the level for it. Dragonfly here, by the way. There is a little bit of different movement that you can do here. You can get underneath the flower there and then uh, head bash clip for it. Or it's about the same. So do what you want to do. Travel these uh, rooftops to get Russell Tim. Or Russell. Grab the key. And drop down and hit this machine. As you can see, there's not really a lot happening. We're just sort of tra traveling through the level. Whatever gems are on the way, we just pick them up. drop all the way down the flowers don't really have anything to offer Leave that NPC for later. You just want to be tro uh, going up the ascent. So again, that like jump hover, and then here you can actually just—you don't have to go all the way to these wooden logs. You can actually stand on the edge of the wall, uh, honey fall, to save a little bit of movement. So this is the second NPC that you can do the dragonfly dupe on. Uh, for this one, it's after the third bit of dialogue. As you can see, I've glitched out a bit. So, but it's after the third bit of dialogue, as long as you don't glitch out any dialogue. And then you can skip an entire interaction after that by just pressing X and square, uh, X and triangle, or A and Y together once. Move along the path to the treasure chest, or oh, not treasure chest, but the dragonfly chest. couple of 25 gems along the way and then after this we are going to do the rocks mini game which is very glitchy the rocks mini game is especially glitchy <coughs> so when it comes to this mini game this first rock is generally quite consistent you'll always generally get that one but after that, it's sort of luck based. A lot of things that you'll see me doing here is jumping around it. I'll, of, I'll oftentimes uh, flame it and charge through it. Sometimes you need to go up to the first step and jump down for a rock. This is me trying to use a aiming manipulation. But there's a whole bunch of manipulations that you can do to get rocks like this is definitely a very slow rocks if you see a rock uh, like this then jump and you may collect it or you go up to the first step and drop down and you will collect it 
You also want to be aiming in these particular spots. And you also sort of want to be looking at the rock as it hits. Otherwise, it may just despawn. But you kind of want to be aiming for very specific, uh, specific spots. Me, me doing that was sort of risky. But it gets you to this NPC a lot quicker. And quick skipping this guy is actually really satisfying. His dialogue doesn't glitch out. And it's actually quite a bit of dialogue. But with that mini game done, we will now leave the level and get a cutscene. So upon the cutscene finishing, you will be put back into this main area here. You finally hand in the ice rune. And that is the last time you will interact with that NPC. We head back into the ice area. You can do the ice gate clip again if you wish. Or go for it normally. I'm just getting focused back on that. So let's carry on through that pathway into this area again. Go straight up to this dragonfly. And then for this NPC you def So on PS2, don't really need to worry about this NPC that much. He will greet you, talk to you, it's all normal. On GameCube, you want to electrocute him. Because he will turn around into the carpet. You want to interrupt him before he does that. Otherwise you'll be going into the carpet and it will take a very long time for him to actually talk to you. But we talk to him and we enter Thieves Den. So PS2 you'll have 57 dragonflies at this point. On GameCube you'll have 56 dragonflies at this point. So Thieves Den is very bad for gems. You don't really want to be worrying too much about the gems. Like, there's a lot of twos that are on route. There's also a couple tens. But, like, there's no fives in this level. There's no twenty fives. There's not really a whole lot of anything. On PS2, you're just going to be sort of running through this level, picking up all of the loose dragonflies, as well as the key for the chest. Um, but on GameCube... Uh, you will be doing the platforming minigame which is here. Now, I did a little bit of interesting movement after that whirlwind. That's because I actually got hit as I went into it. So if you get hit as you enter a whirlwind you will take the damage animation after it. So I tried to uh, cancel the animation and stay up there but that didn't work out. But for GameCube players, you'll be doing this. For PS2 players, if you fail a dupe, then you have to do this. If you fail both dupes, then don't worry. <laughs> then don't really worry about it. Oh well, if you fail both dupes. Well, if you fail both dupes, then you got to do this. If you fail one... No, if you fail one, you have to do this. If you fail both, then you have to do this. 
as well as either Honeymar Slide or Oasis Speedway Time Attack. Which at that point, if you're doing, well, no. On PS2, you would do Oasis Speedway Time Attack and Race. Like, do both of those. Instead of uh, one Dragonfly from two areas. And also, that is a platforming skip. If you just do that, you will get the Dragonfly, just like that. Again, hitboxes extend downwards. But for GameCube players, like that's definitely something that you want to learn. PS2 players, you should learn it, but you should also learn Dragonfly duping. <laughs> it's almost as if Dragonfly duping is ridiculous. <clears throat> and it is actually theoretically possible to Dragonfly dupe more than just the two dialogue ones. There are a couple of... Uh, well, there is another Dragonfly that can be duped through a death method. But... That one's not consistent. But the rest of this level is now strictly uh, movement. Yeah, not a lot, not a whole lot to say here. I don't know if my PV does this or not, but yeah, okay, it is. There's gonna be another gate coming up. Uh, this is actually one of the uh sort of harder ones, really, to get down. You can press the buttons and do it the normal way if you so wish. On PS2, this lag clip is actually easier. On GameCube, it's variable. It's a lot less variable considering that this rip talk is alive. And generally helps with lagging. <coughs> but that lag clip can be very, very difficult to do on GameCube. Take the whirlwind, you need to go up this top path for dragonfly. Specifically this one. Then after Martin, you're just going to drop down to the hidden one. Now I play on a, I play on a CRT by the way, so all of this is like pitch black. Like, so much of this is pitch black, like, this level is so dark. Like, the lighting doesn't really do much. <laughs> now we finally get to put the ice breath to use. There is an ice breath challenge here, just follow what the route does. Also, if you charge through challenge portals, they may not work. Walk through them, it's consistent. Follow this route. This route's actually gem efficient, I believe. But that picks up all the greens and leaves behind a couple reds, I'm pretty sure. And these jumps can be a little bit tricky, just sort of trust the hover to work. Is it the best thing for that? Once you do that, you then can drop down here. There's a lot of greens here. Try to pick up as many of them as you possibly can. Again, Sparks is like really good. There's a mimic enemy there which you can just uh, push off the edge and pick up his gem automatically. But generally just running through until the key chest. <coughs> and then 
leave thieves then. And we go straight into the second and final use. I do another dialogue skip there for some reason. I don't know why my PB did that. But it did it, so yay. So campfires to put out and there's also the final dragon in Dragon uh final loose dragon fly in Dragon Realms. Along the way because we love putting dragonflies in the middle of challenges. But your your uh dragonfly count should be a perfect sixty five at this point. That's why you have to put in the backup mini games. By the way, like the dragonfly route is literally perfect up until this point. If you fail both dupes, in fact, you have to do Honeymarsh slide. I'm pretty sure. Well, no, 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 you just. Never mind. You do feast and platforming to make up for it. I don't know why my brain got really. I don't know why I seem to lose track of what backups are. But there will be a more coherent explanation of what to do in each situation. Jurassic Jungle is the final level. We're here. Plenty of lives. Don't have to worry about lives really. Like they're very easy to come by. It's moving through the level, progressing quickly. A lot of the gems are in the later half of the level. There's quite a few good ones here. These T Rexes can only be killed with Electric and ice. Don't try to use fire or bubble. Bubble doesn't kill anything. Uh, this gem in the game, the pattern is red, green, blue, magenta, uh, purple, not really magenta, and then yellow. There's a couple of extra twos that you can pick up if you want some security, but two gems aren't really going to do much at this point. It's a couple of five gem vases. That gets you your first dragonfly of the level. And immediately after the first dragonfly, we pick up our second one. And this guy will most likely hurt you. Unless you're a god gamer. A couple of twos here that you can just pick up and then do a jump hover. Right, those two those four gems are like actually not too bad in terms of gems per second. <laughs> Jurassic Jungle starts off quite slow, but picks up quite a bit in the second half. So you want to activate the electric challenge. It's quite a weird electric challenge. I feel like there was supposed to be a lot more in this area. quite simple you can skip having to go all the way to this one don't need to have bash just jump hover and electric breath through the ground <coughs> and then do that to get ret slash karen slash whatever sometimes it's ret sometimes it's karen 
Depends what you're playing on. Depends what language you're playing in. On PS2, there's uh, there's holes in these bridges, by the way, so be careful of the holes in the bridges. But on GameCube, these bridges are perfectly fine. Led straight to that second platform. No point to dealing with the first. I was worried about gems in this run for some reason. So I picked up a couple of extra twos. S some decent gems here, uh, especially these 225s and the five gem vases. Then this area here also has a lot of fives and a couple tens. For this thief, you really want to make sure you get a good head start on him. Like, he can be very difficult to grab. And charge jump gliding is your best way of dealing with it as well, since that will extend your glide as long as possible, uh, as far as it can go. Pick up the last of those dinosaurs, make sure you collect all of them to get one key, and then we will return what the thief had to the other scientist to get Bonky. We do this part backwards because of something that will happen after this dragonfly. We're going to replenish our invincibility. Even though I think I'm replenishing it after this anyway. So, so yeah, we're going to pick up Bonky, replenish our invincibility once more, and we're then going to damage abuse outside the map, or outside the level, just to get back into this area. I am debating whether that's actually fast or not, but it just looks cool, so do it anyway. And then you pick up Mitch. And with Mitch, we then open up the guidebook or the atlas. We see 70% and we warp back to the dragon realms. And with 70% of the game completed, we can now go fight Ripto. So the Raptor fight is quite simple, uh, he'll erect a ice wall, he will then move to one, to one position before returning to the original position, he then returns to, he then moves to another position before returning back to that position, and that pattern will continue I think twice until his ice wall then breaks and then it's just three hits with him doing the same movement rotation once again. And the run is done. So back in this position, then back here. There we go. So that's the one hit, second hit, and then you do the third hit, and the time stops on the camera transition. And that is how you do any percent in the early rip though. So I hope this helps. Um, I will do this a little bit more in depth at some other point, but. Not really uh, anything that I plan to do uh, anytime soonish. 
But thank you very much everyone who has watched until this point. And hopefully this has helped you in whatever endeavours you wish to take upon this category with. But I've been through one, so thank you for watching. And I will, well, see you, talk to you, do whatever. I don't know, I don't have consistent closing to YouTube videos. How does this thing work? I don't know how this works. Yeah, uh, I, I guess bye? Bye is the word, isn't it? Yeah, I'll say bye. Three, two, one.